Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to another special. This man is very, very difficult to get hold of. It's like he's always doing something on a Sunday, like having pub lunches, and after the pub lunches, something else. That's what you're doing. I know that's what you're doing. But in the famous book of Baba Tundi, a drag, dream it, believe it, become it. It brings a great honor for us to have Fabio Woodley, our British champion. What do you say, Fab? I'm good, brother. I'm good. All's well. All's well. How's things with you? All all right? Now, you know what? Everything, listen, I'm just really shocked because there's loads of times when we're trying to get hold of you, we can't get hold of you. And Tundi <laughs> said, listen. Tundi said, listen, any of our Fabio disrespect the show, you know he's going to lose his fight. Nah, so never, <laughs> never, never, never. It's just training is always the priority. Always. No. Come on, come on. Um, it's like, looking at your record, it's a very good record, you know. It's like 17 fights, 17 wins, 16 KOs, right? For somebody who has never had any amateur experience, right? Were you just naturally athletic? And what was the gravitas for you in boxing? What brought you to boxing? Yeah, I was I was naturally athletic. I had natural athletic abilities. I was I, I'd never say I was a natural boxer. Um, in that area, I had to really double down and figure it out and and work hard basically and and learn and and figure it out for my style and myself of how I box. But I always say like I kind of fell into boxing. Like, well, just one day it was just something I thought I'd like give a go, try. It seemed good. I like I like. I was like pushing myself either in the gym or whichever way, but just kind of that you versus you test. I always enjoyed doing that. And then I knew boxing kind of was the ultimate one of those. So I thought, let me just give it a go, have some fun with it, enjoy it. And it just kind of went from there. Really. I just, I say like I went to the gym one day and I just never left and that was it. Well, how old were you then when you went, you just walked into a gym? How old were you? Uh, I was 20, 21, something like that. All right. 21. Yeah. Okay. So, what, how many white collars did you have? I know, like you had quite a few white collar fights, right? Four. That was it. Yeah, I just had four. Yeah, you're a gangster for real. Four <laughs> white collar fights. <laughs> yeah. I now that, you know what? I think it's about levels as well, and like sometimes someone can be just. It's like it's an amazing story. It's like. The guy that springs to mind who never had no amateur fights whatsoever, like people talk about Dwight Muhammad Quarry, like the former light heavyweight and cruiserweight world champion. Like he was like, he was like early 80s, he went right throughout the 80s and he went up, he moved out. Vander Holyfield actually beat him to become, um, to become IBF, no, sorry, to become WBA cruiserweight champion in the world. Yeah. Right? It was, it was a wicked, wicked fight. Wicked, incredible. If you know young kid on here, go and watch that. Vander Holyfield, Dwight Muhammad Quarry, first fight, wicked fight. Um, and a guy could just slip a punch, but he had no amateur experience at all. Mm. Do you think, like, the things that you are doing now, especially with this big fight with Frazier Clark, and you going in as the favourite, as many people are saying, you're the favourite for this fight, you're, you're the betting favourite. Not selling you, not trying to take off your game, but you actually bet your favorite for this fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does do you think we're going to see more of a way where people do not participate in amateur boxing? Um, step up if they're young enough to have a couple of white collar fights, uh, get around influential people like you did with Dylan White and then turn professional. Do you think that's going to happen? Yeah, I think so. I think that's I think that's always the way when there's someone that leads the way and there's someone you can look to and say, Okay, cool, they did it. Because if, if no one's ever done it before, it's definitely harder for people to go like, Well, what do I do if I if I'm not really near to an ABA club or I'm not getting on with an ABA club or I can't really seem to get any fights or it's not working for me or or whatever reason it might be that you're not down the ABA route. If there's an option for you to white collar or, or whichever one way you find it to get into boxing um, and make your way through the sport, then I think all of those all of those doors will open up for people more and more. As I progress and others as well who, who have done things in a bit of a different way, um, I think that gives a, it just gives a North Star for people to look at and go, yeah, you know what, I can do this even though things aren't lined how they quote-unquote should be, there's a way for it to be done. 
Okay. Because, like, your fight, I think, like, it's been carefully planned out, right? But, because I remember when they gave you, what's the guy name? Latte. When they gave you Latte to fight, mm. yeah? And you blipped him in three rounds. And, like, Latte fought Daniel Dubois. So, I think it's kind of like a measuring stick. And then you moved on. You fight Eric Molina, who's a world title challenger. Mm. And you blips him. And I'm looking at that and I'm saying, this is actually really good matchmaking. Yeah. Right? Because there's still hard fights because we still got to take into consideration you've had no amateur experience. Mm. But you blips those guys. Right? And you're very fleet footed. You know what I mean? And you got fast hands. Do you think that is a benefit for you not having the amateur experience? Because sometimes you have the amateur experience, you get so used to certain styles that you get typecasted to think, well, I'm going to be overly wary of this person, overly wary of that. And like with you, you, how you box, you feel out, guys, you pop your jab sharp, but you always answer back. If someone hits you with a hard shot, you don't answer back straight away, but you say, all right then, but I'm going to answer back in that round. Now, that's what makes you excited. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, I definitely think it helped it, because it allowed me to become the natural fighter that works best for me. I think sometimes with with amateur boxing, ABA or however, they mould you in. They have a ge- not uh, well. They do. They have a bit of a generic style of how they want you to box. Is the box a certain way and do certain things, and this is how you do it, and and follow this kind of line. Whereas. With my natural kind of athleticism and abilities, or however, that style may not have been the best for me, or it may not at least got the most out of me. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas coming from a white collar round with a with a more free, with a more free coaching system, and kind of just letting me be me and figure out where it works, I'm fine tuning it in places because obviously there was elements of my there's elements of my um, of my style that don't work. Sometimes I get caught and this, that and the other, but that's all a learning process. But the upside is I get to double down on the areas that work well for me. And I think that's when you get the best of someone. Right. So who, who did you, who did you draw like influence from? Like thinking, oh, I want to box. What gave you the idea that you wanted to actually participate in boxing? It was Roy Jones Jr. He was my. Yeah, I can see, I can see, I can see a lot of like my, my go-to, my uh, the one I looked at and thought, ah, I want to be that. I want to, I want to have that. I want to, I want a style like that because it was so entertaining. He was doing mental stuff that people at that time weren't really doing, fighting in a way that people just couldn't really get and like didn't really understand. And the way he floated and moved and just got around the ring, and I was just, I was in awe of it. And I am. Um, that was really someone who I kind of, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say based my style on, but there was a heavy influence of there of being that kind of, uh, f- that, having that kind of flow to their, the way they box. Okay. Okay. I can see a lot. I know that you must have met him. He was there at your fight when you fought David Adelaide. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah. I met him. And, um, with him we did that massive stage with all them, all the greats and, and past yeah. and present boxers and things like that. And the one person I, I pulled aside and asked, like, look, could I just have a picture with you was Roy Jones Jr. He was the only one I had any... Like, obviously, I care and I love for all the other guys, but the one that I'm... Re- I'm not much of a trying to stop and take pictures of people like that, but the one person I needed to for me and for my thing, and I, I pulled him apart and I, I said to him as well, I said, look, you're you're the reason I, bo- I box. You're the reason I started boxing. I just like, look, can I have a quick picture just for me, just for just for me? And what you do? Would you that touch? Would you like a little groupie? Tell the truth. Yeah, 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 hundred <laughs> percent. And I don't. And that's the thing as well. I don't do that with anyone. I've seen, I've seen stars up and down the thing. And I, and I meet him. I say hello. Nice to meet you. Like pleasure. Blah 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 blah. Nice, nice. But the only time I've ever been in awe of someone, I've really been in like I felt an aura come from them was was him. Where I was like, right, this is actually him. Like this is. Because then it, it made me think back to like when I first ever boxed and I was watching YouTube videos and things like that. Right, and one second. Like I'd meet him. One second. Yo, Roy. <laughs> yeah, Roy Jones. I've, I've got Fabio Wardley, the British and Commonwealth heavyweight champion. And he was saying that you were the reason why he, why he boxed. 
yeah, he said, you're the reason why he boxed. And like he, um, yeah, when, when we was out in Saudi Arabia, you were the only one that you wanted to get a picture with and he got that. So I thought, you know what? Let me just phone the legend right now. <laughs> and now his phone's just disconnected. But you just had Roy Jones there. <laughs> Sorry, Roy. Yeah, that. yeah, that's what I just wanted to tell you that, sir. All right, you take care. God bless. Yeah, I just, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Man. My black book is ridiculous, my friend. I was but gonna yeah. say, I was gonna say, I bet, I bet. <laughs> yeah, but no, 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 no. I have, to, I have to just call it as it is, and I gotta get to your big fight that you've got coming up on on March thirty first at the O two, which mm. everybody's talking about for the British Commonwealth title, which you hold. You'll be defending against an unbeaten fighter, an Olympian uh, bronze medalist and the Commonwealth Games gold medalist in Mr. Frazier Clark. Mm. I asked Frazier when he came on the show two weeks ago why he was going to win the fight. And he says, like, a lot of people are writing me off, but they'll all see because I just know I'm going to win. Why are you going to come out victorious, Fabio? Mm -hmm. I just can't be stopped. I've, I've, there's something in me that can't... I, I Ultimately, I picked him. I picked the stage. I picked the place. I wanted this moment. I know that in of myself, these are the these big events. The bigger the event, the better I get. The more I show up, the more you see from me. So the mm -hmm. more high pressure environment I put on myself, just the more you're gonna, the, the better I'm gonna come out, and that's gonna be the perfect stage to do it all. Because I picked him for that reason, for the reason of ah, oh, he's he's the Olympic medalist, he's the Commonwealth medalist, he's this, he's that. He was in the amateurs for this long. That story, that narrative, that background is like, cool, you stick him over here on this pedestal and watch what I do when I take him out. Okay, because like with you and um, David Adderley, um, because I remember when it was muted for um, you to fight Frazier and Sky didn't come up with the bids, boxing didn't come up with the bids, not Sky, boxing didn't come up with the bids. Um, and then everybody was like, what's going on here? And you were going back and forth with David Adelaide, who, forget the Barado, he's actually a really nice guy. Forget the Barado. But, you know what I mean? You two are in the same weight division, so I can see where the animosity is going to come from. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so he's, he, him and Frazier went back and forth on, on our channel on the fighters, right? It was very, very funny, right? But it went, it went, we had a little viral effect as well. Uh, but you kind of just, I think you was in Thailand then. I was, I was on holiday. You were on holiday in Thailand. It was, it was not long after a fight, I was, I was away. I remember yeah. you called me, you bailed me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I warned you about the big hands and the big hand of his apple, be careful. But like, it was, <laughs> it was like, yeah. he, yeah, he, so so that didn't happen. And then like, David Adley then got the shot at you. You and David were, were going back and forth on social media. Well, more him than you. Right? How satisfying was that win for you? Yeah, it was. It's the most satisfying win of my career. So for all for all reasons, because of because of the build up, because of the animosity, because of what was said, um, because of the character that he had, and and the way it was framed of kind of good versus bad, and and the characters of which we showed and at the events and things like that. Um, again, with his record of of undefeated, knocking everyone out. I'm travelling to technically an away show, although I was the, the champion fighter. Queensbury's his his back house, so I'm going over there. I'm I'm going to his show under his management, under his team, and then a massive event being Saudi Arabia as well. We had all all the ingredients I needed to be like, yeah, cool. Let me again another they're the moments I live for of like, cool, let me come to your promotion. Let me ask for you. Let me hunt you. Let me go for you. And then watch what I do. The night that you boxed, yeah, on that show there, um, Battle of the Baddest, bro, I've never been to anything like that. I've been in boxing a long time now, but I've never witnessed anything like that. And your nicest thing, after big up Gold Star Promotion, Spencer Brown and, and his team, right, because they threw us out. And it was like, I've never experienced anything. Like the dinner the night before the fight as well was incredible. It was everything was just mad. It was mad.
How did you feel about being out there at such a massive event? Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Like, it was such a... Even for me, I've been a part of big shows before. I've too supported other big shows and stuff, so I've done it. I know what, like, the big show feel like is like, but that was that was something entirely different. Um, and it, it was... was it took a bit of... Especially that week as well. It takes a bit of experience to manage as well. Because they there's so many events, there's so many things they want you doing, want you appearing at, want you to be a part of, that to not get... Uh, you can't... It's it's difficult at, at a situation in an event like that to not re, like not treat it like you're not on holiday, but like it's like like you're there as a fan or you're there to soak up all these moments. You're not ultimately you need to keep in your mind you've got a fight at the end of the week. So I probably didn't even get to experience it as well as I could have or or however, because I chose not to. I chose to keep everything really short and sweet and I did all my obligations of things I needed to do or where they wanted me. But as soon as my bit was done, I was gone. I was off. I was back to my hotel. I was, I was chilling. I was relaxing. I was going to training or whatever I needed to do. I wasn't like, even with that, um, like you mentioned, the gala dinner on the Friday, like obviously I turned it up. Mad. It was mad. a madness. And it, it, it was hard in my soul to not stay as well because all the legends are just walking around and there's me and there's so many different people there you can stop and talk to and, and uh, they're almost like once in a lifetime conversations to be able to stop and talk to these people and like have the whole night there. But I literally chose to went, do my piece, eat my food and then cut straight away. Just left as, as quick as I could really, because only I got a fight the next day. I don't, I don't need to be up till 11, 12, one in the morning at this gala dinner, chatty, chatty with everyone. I need to be focused on the job at hand. So I think as a mm. fighter as well, you need to be switched on at that, at that moment and try not to get too, caught up in the awe of it all. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I don't want to keep you too long. I appreciate the fact that you've actually jumped on because I know you're in camp right now. Um, all I can do is wish you the best for, um, what's that, the March 31st. Um, what are the reasons why people should tune into this fight? It's, uh, there's, there's a load of reasons. Why is a great domestic clash? That like the British title always brings a lot out of fighters. It's a it's a very prestigious belt. It's one people love, and there's always it's also the Commonwealth as well. Don't forget that. The That's the, sorry, the, yeah, true. The Commonwealth as well, and um, but it always brings out the most in people. I think there's been some historic kind of British battle, battles back in the day. Um, the playoff of two characters as well from two very different backgrounds between me and Fraser, and interested in seeing how that matchup works. Of, of two two fighters from very different schools of boxing, um, and as well that it's at the, I would call the UK mecca of boxing, which is the O2, a massive a massive venue for boxing. Everyone's had some great nights there, but also the that like obviously with a lot of big fights moving to Saudi now, we don't get too many in the UK where UK mm -hmm. fans are able to turn up and be a part of so. This is one of them. This fight hasn't been taken to Saudi. It's here in the UK, so people should people should turn up, support, and watch them ones because obviously we're seeing more and more the big ones are going overseas in different places. So we've got one on home soil for people to watch. So there's no there's no more reason to turn up. It's a Sunday, different bit of a different day for boxing, but a bank holiday as well. So your Monday's off, so you can get fully stuck into the to the night, the event, and won't have to worry about work the next day. You know what? Mr. Fabio, Fabio, what's, I don't even know what's your nickname in boxing. I don't even know what's your Fabio. <laughs> I don't have one, and like I, 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 I thought about one for ages, and I just thought again, it it seemed forced. It seemed like I'm trying yeah. to really grab at one. No, none never came, so I just thought it is what it is. I'm I'm just Fabio Wardley. Yeah, well, you know what? I know you like to put hands on people, so maybe they should be Fabio, Fabio, the put hands on. Wardley, I don't know, because you, you do really do put, <laughs> you do, you do put hands on guys, man. Or something like that. Yeah, seriously, I wish you all the best for your fight. Um, I think it's for the first time, yeah, the first time in British boxing history have we got two two men of dual heritage fighting for the British title. That's a massive thing. You see, mm. you're thinking, man. Where's, where's Fraser Hart from? Huh? 
He's dual heritage. Like I think he's he's I think his dad's from the Caribbean. I think and he's, uh, he's not uh, no, I'm sure where from. I'm... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, but yeah. So I think me being real, that's a massive thing to know just how far our country has come. Because if I'd have said yeah, to you yeah, fifteen years ago, twenty years ago, that we'll have uh, a, a man of Asian descent being a prime minister, people think you're crazy. So mm. I think. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful time. You know what I mean? Our country, our country is leading the way on a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely moving we're forward. forward. Definitely moving forward. Trust me, trust me, it is madly uh, more than more than anything our country is. But on that note, chap, I'm going to say this to you: dream it, believe it, become it. Come on up! Thank you so much, the British and Commonwealth heavyweight champion, undefeated in 17 fights with 16 KOs. Fabio, I'm going to put hands on you, Woodley. <laughs> hey, thanks, bro. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, my brother. Thank Love you. Bro.